Suzanne, have your ears been burning? We've talked about you so much. Andrew especially talks about you. It, it, it's not your uh, grandfather's chamber of commerce. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know who likes whom. We don't know. Do Republicans like you? Do you like Republicans? Um, do you like big business, uh, big corporations, or just small businesses? Uh, you've heard the expression: if you go, uh, you go broke when you go woke. What happened to the chamber of <laughs> commerce? Well, if you have all these questions, you should call me up. I'd be happy to talk to well, you we, and why, Andrew we, That's anytime. why we called you to have you on tonight. Anytime. So, of course, look, at the end of the day, the Chamber of Commerce has been around 110 years. We have been through all kinds of governments, all kinds of wars, and we show up every day to help job creators. And what we like are pro-business champions in Congress. And I think after tonight, we're going to have a lot more of them. I think we work with everybody all the time, and if you can get past a tweet or a political headline, as your reporter just said, you're going to see a lot of policy experts working together. I guess one of the, uh, the little tiff we had with uh, a gentleman that, that could be um, Speaker of the House said uh, he, he doesn't even want to work with you uh, if he does become Speaker, uh, or work with the Chamber of Commerce if you're still there, Kevin McCarthy. That's sort of what I'm alluding to. Look, I think, again, I think we work with every office. I think we're going to elect a lot of pro-business champions, and I think they all care deeply about this economy. If you look at their commitment to America plan, front and center is economic security, fighting inflation, working on supply chains, energy independence. And we're going to be there like we always are with deep policy research, with economic impact studies, with boring things that actually at the end of the day make a big difference. We're going to sue the government for overreach. We're going to have chambers of commerce, associations, Fortune 100, 5 million small businesses. They're all going to be there to help advance an economic agenda that helps families and communities across the country. And we're going to be good at it. And I think we're going to see pro-business champions in a pro-business Congress that's going to help get it done. So, Suzanne, what is your number one issue? We've heard from uh, people at the polls, at least the exit polls, that inflation is the number one thing they're focused on. What, what's the number one policy issue you'd like to see to deal with that? I think there are a couple things. One is, and maybe most immediately, is we're going to have to avoid this rail strike. Two billion dollars a day in damage to the economy if we don't every day that we let a rail stoppage take place. American families dealing with inflation can't handle that. Employers can't handle it right when we're headed into the holiday season. So I think the rail strike is a really important priority and certainly would be inflationary. We also would like the new Congress to really think about the massive regulatory overreach from this administration. It's threatening decades of consensus on competition. It's costing American families and businesses billions of dollars to try to comply with or fight. And we're hoping that that regulatory oversight is going to take place. And then the thing we hear about from small and large company CEOs all the time is a combination of the worker shortage and crime. You know, we just had about 100 chamber leaders from across the country in town. And for the first time, they listed crime as a problem in employing people and keeping customers safe and doors open higher than the worker shortage. Right. Suzanne, um, you know, so many companies, especially uh, during Trump's presidency, I think thought of themselves as a check or a governor on, in some cases, the truth um, in certain instances. And... This was a period uh, during which the Business Roundtable uh, created its pledge around stakeholder capitalism and the like. I'm curious whether you think there's going to be a shift in terms of the way business is going to approach politics going forward, given the backlash that we've seen. It's a good question, although I think some of this, again, has been a lot of more headlines and tweets and kind of good TV than it's been real policy. And, you know, CNBC is what I keep on in my office, in part because I think you do talk about real policy and the economy and what's really happening. And I think that's important. And we ought to turn away from politics tonight and really get back to policy. I would say at the U.S. Chamber, we were really, we never shut down our PAC. And, and we were some of the first people to give money to try to lead people back to a, a more normal political era. I think that companies are anxious to get that done. But look, there is a wing on the far left that flirts with or is actually proponents of socialism. And there is a wing on the far right that does the same thing with populism. And free enterprise doesn't like either one of them. But I do think you'll see companies that have been very active in this political cycle and will continue to be for those pro-business champions that want to get America's economy moving again. 
heard a lot of that. I was nodding a lot, uh, Suzanne. So I'm not, I think you might be right about a lot. But, but you sort of said that other stuff makes good TV, but then you guys talk about actual issues, which made me think you were saying we don't really do good TV. But I, well, we do both. I, 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 that's not what, I don't think that, that wasn't really what you meant. Uh, you're always on in my office, I'm telling you. That's, so and, I think you're. Low regulation, uh, things that help businesses get, get, get out of the way of the private sector. Uh, so entrepreneurs can do what they do best, providing jobs, growing uh, the economy. These are all things that I used to associate the, the chamber with and the business roundtable with. And I, I, just for me, it seems like these organizations have lost you, their, their you, way a little. You need to come visit. You are okay. reading too many headlines. Let me buy you a I beer. Feel better. I, I feel better. I feel better. Listen, you got to watch some of the suing. You say we're buy doing me a beer. I like beer. I'm like yeah, that. I'm like the, that you, Supreme you, Court guy, that Kavanaugh guy. I like beer. I do. Well, and you got to see some of the suits we're taking to the Supreme Court to fight back this regulatory overreach. Then you'd see your grandfather's chamber. Very good. You, 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 brought, me, you brought me back, uh, Suzanne. I, I appreciate it. I'm glad we had this talk.